Up until now, the Indian Scout and Scout Bobber set the standard for a plucky middleweight cruiser with a relatively high revving liquid-cooled engine that delivers some decent peak power as well as the obligatory mid-range and torque. But just a couple of weeks back, Harley announced their all-new Sportster S and although it'll be a little while before we can ride one, I have to say it looks pretty impressive on the spec sheet. Plenty of power, good components and up-to-date tech. So is it game over for the Scout or does it still hold up to the new contender? In this video, we'll go over the specs of each bike to figure out which one looks best. And at the end, I'll tell you why this might be an unfair comparison. So let's start with the engines at the heart of these two beautiful looking machines. The Scout Bobber has always been one of my favourite cruisers because of the way it delivers its power. The 1133cc liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin is good for 97 newton meters of peak torque delivered at 5,600 RPM, so similar to something like Harley's Iron 1200, but a little higher in the rev range. But whereas the Harley dies off quickly, topping out at 66 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, the more modern liquid-cooled Indian can rev up a couple of thousand RPM higher for a solid peak power of 100 horses. That's a significant jump on the old air-cooled Sportsters, which certainly sets the Scout apart. It's the sort of cruiser that you could jump over to if you're used to a sporty naked bike, for example, and you wouldn't get bored with the lack of top end. And I'd also say it sounds pretty nice if you get the right pipes on it. But hang on a minute, it looks like Harley might have outdone them with the new Sportster S. It takes the same 1252cc liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin that was first used in the Pan America Adventure bike and tunes it down for a bit more mid-range and low-down torque. So while it gets a lot of the same tech like their variable valve timing and lightweight engine covers, tweaks have been made to the valves, ports, and cams to increase the velocity of flow through the combustion chamber. The result is a 10% increase in torque between 3 and 6,000 RPM, although you do sacrifice some top end power with 121 horsepower produced at 7,500 RPM as opposed to the full 150 of the Pan America. But look, those are still pretty impressive figures, especially versus the Scout. That's 20 more horsepower and 30 more newton meters of peak torque and all at similar revs, so this one clearly has to go to the heart. As for the chassis, well, the Scout Bobber is a pretty simple bike, but it works well and I was super impressed with the handling given the dimensions of it. The frame is a cast aluminium spine that uses the engine as a stress member, suspended on a non-adjustable fork and shock with 120mm of travel at the front and just 50mm at the rear. Brakes are simple too with 297mm disc front and rear with an unbranded two-pot caliper at the front and a single pot at the rear. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but I actually found it to be good enough, especially if you use a bit of both instead of relying on just the front. Tires are Pirelli MT60 RSs, which are a bit flat track looking, but actually perform okay on the road as well. The Sportster S is kind of similar. It certainly has a comparable stance with the fat front tire and low slung lines, and it also uses the engine as a stress member for the majority of its structure. But the choices of equipment certainly take things up an extra notch with a fully adjustable 43mm upside down fork, courtesy of Showa and a piggyback monoshock at the rear, also adjustable and from Showa. Brakes are Brembo with a four-pot radially mounted monoblock caliper at the front on a 320mm disc and a two-pot on a 260mm disc at the rear. Tires are from Dunlop with their GT503s, appearing to have more of a road bias than the Indian's Pirelli's. Now, I'll have to reserve full judgment until I get to ride one, but on paper, that Harley looks good. Now, travel is similarly limited to the Scout, but the adjustability in the suspension allows the ride to dial in their own preference to suit their riding style and weight. Generally, you'd expect a four-pot radial Brembo to be a little more powerful than a two-pot brake, and the tyre choice looks good too. But also, Harley have focused on keeping the Sportster S light, with a claim weight of 228 kilograms in running order, which is a good 23 kilos lighter than the Scout Bobber. So again, I think this one has to go to the Harley. On to the tech, and let's start with a list of features on the Indian. ABS. And now for the Harley, which offers a few riding modes, including road, rain and sport, and a couple of custom slots to dial in your own settings. You can change the throttle response, engine map, engine braking, drag torque slip, 
traction control and ABS levels, and some of them are corner insensitive owing to a six axis IMU that feeds lean data back into the system. All of this is managed through a circular four inch TFT display, which is fairly small, but packs in a lot of features, including Bluetooth connectivity for your phone and headset, which opens up call handling, messages, media playback, and navigation prompts through the Harley Davidson app. Eesh, that's another one for the Harley, and I don't think there's any debate in it. Now, the styling of the two bikes isn't a million miles apart, although I would say that the Indian leans more towards the retro side. In fact, I think it strikes a nice balance between old and new. Harley, on the other hand, have taken a pretty contemporary approach to this bike, the Fat Bob, and the Pan America, and to my eyes, they all look pretty good. They're different and distinctive, while still retaining some signature Harley design cues for continuity. But looks are subjective, and so I'll have to call this one a draw, but you can let me know which one you prefer down in the comments below. One of the biggest factors for many buyers is the price, and this is a category in which the Indian can claw back a point. It starts at £12,295 in the UK, and it's a snip in the US at just $10,999, so that's a decent price if you're just looking for a stylish set of wheels with a lively engine, all in a package which is stripped back and doesn't distract from the riding experience. Now the Harley though, it starts at £13,995 in the UK, so just over 1500 quid more but in the US it's $14,999 so that's four grand more so in the UK that's almost a no-brainer for all that extra performance equipment and spec but in the US that's a price gap that could well put the Sportster S out of budget and here's why it's maybe a bit of an unfair comparison. You see, there's been quite a few leaked shots of the non-S version of the Sportster, which will be dialed back a bit in spec and take more styling cues from the existing Harley Sportster lineup. We're talking right way up forks, twin shocks at the rear, and a bit more bodywork and polished finish. This bike almost certainly will be priced closer to the Scout Bobber and will be more comparable in terms of spec. So what's the Sportster S's true competitor? Although it doesn't have the road focus wheels and riding position, you could argue that everywhere else is pretty damn close to the FTR S. Lean sensitive rider aids, check. Bluetooth enabled TFT dash, check. 120 horsepower, check. $14,990. $99 exactly, check. They're really pretty close. Only the Harley does it in a way that's more familiar to their core customer base. I personally can't wait to take one out for a spin and I'll hook that up as soon as I can as well as a head to head on the road with the FTR. But in the meantime, let me know your pick down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll see you then.